Right, so since we last spoke, what, so what have you been up to? Have you, <laughs> is there any more, more deals coming through? There is. There's so many deals coming through, mostly on the development side. So yeah. the maintenance is running and it's achieving new heights. Every year, every month, we're upping the, uh, our target yeah. by about 7,000 a month on target, which is great to sign yeah. that. It's growing new clients coming on board, which is fantastic. Great clients as well. Uh, Dexter's just came on board with yeah. us on the maintenance division. Um, CBRE came with us last December, mm -hmm. and they're giving us a lot of volume. It, it's amazing, actually. We just, uh, thank you very much. No we just signed with James Pendleton as well, and uh, in January, just uh, when I came back from annual leave. And it's amazing how we see how they're in, how much they're enjoying the experience mm -hmm. because of their lack, how transparent we are and what we do and how we operate and how everything is alive, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and you get to see it because you know when you start using one property manager and then suddenly you've got two mm -hmm. and then you've got three and then you've got seven, mm -hmm. you know. And it's just you know, and it's like yourself, business. It's we. That's where we spend most of our time, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not enjoying the people you're doing business with and you're not really on the yeah. same like-minded, you know, why come up to work and walk into a site and say, I don't mm. like that guy, but he does a good job. Is it worth it? Mm. Like, we don't like to think so. Mm. We, even our staff, mm. we're, you know, we speak to any of our staff, we're happy staff, yeah. we're happy people. And that's how we like to build our relationships yeah. and work. Uh, it makes a massive difference as well, yeah. uh, how you execute. Uh, so what have I been up to? Uh, mostly our own property developments. Uh, so we've been really structuring that. We've yeah. got Sutton, Dulwich, uh, Collier's Wood, uh, Liam Court in Streatham. That's five, four, four, eight, uh, 13. We've got about 16 new builds. Um, two of them ex above existing uh, buildings. So are you, you going to build these out to sell or to keep the portfolio? Seven, eight, uh, 11 of those we're keeping. Yeah. And the rest we're selling. That's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. And the, how did you raise the money for the projects? Uh, equity yeah. and crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, yeah. Because you mentioned this crowdfunding. I've always thought crowdfunding was complicated. Or is it getting easier? I think it's becoming more um, aware. People are becoming more aware of crowdfunding simply. Yeah. And I think the obvious fact is because lending has become so mm. difficult to acquire and the interest rates and everything. It makes it. Yeah. Thing is, you know, they, I don't think banks really understand what developers are doing, and I think crowdfunding do. Do you ever meet your investors, the crowd, you know, the no. that could, are they global? Uh, they could be. Uh, and that's what's, the the what's the minimum they can put in? Exactly. 10K, 5K? I, I actually wouldn't be able to answer Really? You. So I you don't never know. know who puts it in? Never know. Never know. I mean, we could do. It's a, I yeah. think it's quite, they're quite transparent. Yeah. Uh, but it's a question we never ask. You know, they take the project, yeah. uh, they take the numbers, they evaluate internally, then they post it onto their forum. Yeah. And obviously, their clients who signed up to the forum bid. So do you raise 100% of the money through that source or just, just the equity you need for the deposit with the bank? Correct. Oh, okay. Correct. Just the equity. Uh, the, yeah. yeah. The development yeah. costs. Yeah, the development costs. Yeah. And who do you usually get your bank funding from? Uh, companies? Well, uh, crowdfunding yeah. are the ones that develop. Yeah, and, but fund. Who, what, and what banks do you use normally? Uh, well, we've never done a the our first development was a one bedroom house, yeah. and we converted it into a two bed, and that was done through TMW, the mortgage TMW, works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was the only small. So, one do you want to build up the sort of development arm, and you know, because that, that that is the ideal scenario. You're building out for yourself, isn't it? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even when we, we, you know, like I said on my previous video, we always knew when we started buying and renting, eventually we'll get into development. Yeah. Now we're doing it as a joint venture with an equity partner that we have. Yeah. But there are, you know opportunities yeah, that come what up about, what about sort of going down the our friend Grant Cardone's model where you're buying blocks of apartments which don't really need much work only a little bit of love yeah so, i.e. new bathrooms new carpet yeah. maybe you can increase the square footage by putting airspace or yeah. bolting on the side yeah and then keeping because I think you know I, I know his model works in America yeah because land values are so much cheaper yeah. aren't they and you can buy so many more units. Yeah. And he talks about his tenants as customers. Yeah. Paying, you know, paying his mortgages down over a period of time. But does that business model work in the UK? Well, uh, Rockefeller said one thing interesting, and he said, "Control everything, own nothing." Yeah. And I think the Cardone, and uh, forgive me if 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 it's not this, but I think what he does is similar to a lease option. So you've got a, a building right 
and maybe it's not generating as much cash as you'd like. Maybe you can't sell it. For whatever reason, you need to hold on to it. Me, I come up to you and say, right, I will give you a fixed £10,000 a month for your building and allow me to explore it for 20 years. So I'll get a long lease on your building for 20 years, similar to a lease option, can be worded differently, different people word it different ways, uh, and they'll take control, power of attorney of your building, at a fixed price as well, with maybe the option to buy at the end. Yeah, he, he just goes and buys, he buys the, the, the freehold for, for 102, 300 units, and then he will get the feasibility of master plans done, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then once he's secured the deal, he will then put it out to his... Cardone Capital Fund, absolutely. where individuals around the world, oh, non-accredited right. investors or investors can put in 5Ks, 50Ks, 100 absolutely. grand. Absolutely. And then you, he actually will physically send you a check each month for the money he, you're generating from the rentals. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, if there's any uh, return on capital when maybe they redevelop and they improve the, the, the square footage, yeah. or the thing, I mean, when you're we buying, get cash back. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think you can, you know, the purpose of going into any investment, you're either going to add value or it's a cash cow mm -hmm. king in terms of cash flows like crazy. Yeah. So to buy and hold every project you get involved in, mm -hmm. then you need to have a substantial amount of funds to be able to do that or yeah. get an outside investment. Our model at the moment is we do 70% as JVs with clients where we buy, develop and sell. Mm -hmm. And what is too small for our client, for our equity partner at the moment, we tend to keep. Yeah. And it generates enough cash flow to sustain yeah. what we do. But even, you know, we're based in West London, even in Barnes, Clapham, Wandsworth, <clears throat> subprime areas, mm. a small deal, 100%. a flat is six, seven hundred thousand quid. A house is two, three million quid. So it's the entry point is it is not a small amount. But if we were to buy a deal where I'm from in Portsmouth, it's got a million quid to get you. Oh yeah, you can spend that over yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. So yeah, so we've done quite a lot of joint venture projects before with high net worths finding i find the deals i package them up we do feasibilities the investor says right we'll do the funding and we do a 70 30 profit share yeah. so that's worked quite well yeah oh yeah there's no risk for us they exchange contracts in their name um so there's no risk we do the bill the cost and have a 70 30 profit share in their favor so that works well and it works also, very well and in the summer um, we were pitching to the Chinese investors. So we had f six groups of Chinese coaches come in and I used to pitch in front of the TV saying how wonderful we are. These are this is what we've done, track record, showed them a few properties. They went back to Hong Kong and um, you know we, we secured like five lots of a million quid transactions. Beautiful. Beautiful. But I, I guess there, there was prob problems in uh, Hong Kong, which there has been, and you try and open a UK bank account with a Hong Kong director. Right. And trying to pass the KYC checks. We, we, had, we had three or four properties on exchange, yeah, ready yeah. to deploy the cash, but we couldn't open a bank account because they, one of their team had to be on the, the UK new co-company. And we couldn't, have, so we just had to walk around the end. I think hours and hours wasted. The JV and the profit share where you find an investor that has the land, has everything in place and obviously approaches you to do the, the yeah. build side of things at cost works so well. I mean, yesterday we just had, we had lunch um, at the Shard meeting an investor. A young kid has an £8 million portfolio. He's cashing in on about three of his buildings. Uh, he's mostly active in East London, so £8 million yeah. will get him, get him a lot. But he's absolutely scared of getting into property development because he's got the money, he's got the intelligence, the numbers, he knows how the, the, the number side of development works, mm. but he's so fearful of not having the right experience on the build. So he was so yeah, privileged all to he's got see to us. Exactly. So he's, he's excited that he's met you. He's exactly. going to manage all his... Uh, all his uh, that grey area he doesn't understand, yeah. So where did you find it from? And it's that, that's the important question. It's how do you attract and how do you actually come across such people? You have to speak out what you're willing to do. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's, and that is how we've met. And that's how I meet everyone who comes to this Absolutely. office. Absolutely. They all get attracted by the content we put out on social media. 100%. 100%. It's 100%. unbelievable. 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 You know, we, we had um, one of the head 
um, marketing managers from Velux. Okay. They're based in the Netherlands. Velux is a Netherlands company. Billion dollar company. He came in here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, seen our YouTube videos. Felt really nice. comfortable. We opened up. We spoke about what he's done, his ups and downs, my trials and tribulations. And after the meeting, he, you know, basically, you know, he wants to collaborate with us. Velux are just getting into fixed glass roofs. So uh, side returns, wow. walk on glass, where right. Velux used to be just the Velux windows. Correct, it? correct. Now they're getting into uh, fixed glass windows because they know in London, everyone's having fixed glass windows. So they, 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 they potentially might give us the contract, which we could utilize you to fit all the Velux windows. fixed windows. Amazing. What a contract that way. What a brand to be associated with. And that's Absolutely. us creating content. Absolutely. And people just watching. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. Get, it just attracts. They're out there. They're out there. They're out there because we don't know everything, right? And we're experts at what we do. Um, every monkey in its cage, right? You just stay in your cage because that's what you're good at. And, you know, but speak about what you want to do. And I think, you know, just like the guy I met yesterday, he's so fearful about getting into projects because he doesn't understand. Mm. And he's got all this money. He's got so many deals in East London, which is an area we're not active in, but considering the relationship now, he's actually come into one of our factories in Southampton uh, to check out how obviously we build off site because he was very intrigued. Again, energy was there, synergy, like-minded, and he just wants to work with us. Felt comfortable with how we explained the product in terms of how we develop and how a project that can take 18 months takes eight because of obviously everything. Where's he from? Is he uh, um, uh, I think uh, No, I think he's, uh, he's a Sri Lankan. Okay. You try and go. Yeah. Um, and it's like everything, right? You don't need many clients, you need good clients because exactly. after him, you know, he has his own network, right? Exactly. Uh, and it's all about, also about building that relationship. And then, then you can speak to him about going out to his network to generate more exactly. uh, capital. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So it's really interesting. And I think, yeah, it's speaking about it. It's positioning yourself to be open to that. Uh, because I think sometimes we're, we're so very narrow-minded, especially if you're working in the business mm -hmm. and not on the business. We get, I mean, I'm guilty. I get so focused on the day-to-day -day activity yeah. that, um, I mean, Jeff Bezos says you shouldn't be making more than three decisions a day. Yeah. Um, so how many decisions? I make tons of decisions a day Crazy. that don't add value. Exactly. So, you know, nearly every day.